World War III, Putin threatens to go nuclear. Russia blitzkrieg in America with nukes is biblical prophecy. I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rawacha, Kodash, the bonus to the elders at Great Millstone, talking the truth through the spirit, singing honest to the elect. Peace and blessings be to all the sins for men, women, and children. Do consist of the one third. And to the confusion of faces in the four corners of the earth. Shalom Wong. Putin threatens the West with total nuclear destruction. The scripture speaks about all things must be fulfilled. Not one jot or one tittle in the law in no way shall pass. Or heaven and earth will pass away first. And in Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, it says, the earth abideth forever. So with that being said, before this happens, so many other things must happen. Like in James, the fifth chapter, if I'm not mistaken, speaks about how you rich men. So the economic collapse of America must happen as well. It also speaks about Egyptian fighting against Egyptian America, spiritually Egypt. So there's going to be race wars here. That also goes on and speaks about famine. The cost of food is going up, right? It also talks about pestilences. They're talking about the CD19 coming back around again. America is also known as spiritually something. So, therefore, you have more than, quote, unquote, two genders, right? So, there's so many things that the Bible said was going to happen that's happening now. And one of the most major prophecies prior to Putin, you know, letting them things fly. It's the MOTB in Revelation, the 13th chapter, the Haragma, which goes hand in hand with the Neuralink and hand in hand with Swedes and Sweden purchasing and making payments with the biochip in their right hand or in their left hand. Either way, they have the MOTB. All those are biblical prophecies that must transpire before this does. But the fact that they keep talking about nuclear and that Putin is talking about him taking that stance goes to show you the times we're living in. And this is why you have to stand strong and firm in what you truly believe in. Because when these things was the when these things weren't evident, people were laughing and mocking and scoffing. Now that it's evident, we should be all the more boastful in the spirit. To continue to preach because this is the demise of Esau Edom. It's a sure token of demise to them, but for us, it will actually be uh, salvation. So Isaiah 54 and 16. Behold, I have create I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. The Lord gave men the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. He put the spirit on them to create the thermonuclear warheads. Hence, the the wise men of Timon will be the Germans. Well, who, who, who are the ones who did the fissions and the fusions, the one that was splitting up the atoms? It was the German scientists, and they all were split up between America and Russia at the, um, the Second War. Second World War, forgive me, World War II. Let me get that right. World War II, the second woe. And in the scriptures in Revelation, it says, two woes have passed and the third woe cometh quickly. Woe means destruction. When you go to war, there is destruction. So World War One and World War Two have passed and the third woe, World War Three, cometh quickly, which is on the brink. We're talking about three world wars within the span of a century. Through the spirit empire, you have by Shema al Shai, right? So, it's a lot here. This is what Putin had to say at one of his conferences. Putin told a conference in Sokai, from the moment from the moment the launch of missiles is detected, no matter where it comes from, from any point of the world. You hear that? Ocean or from any territory, such a number, so many hundreds of our missiles appear in the air in a retaliatory strike 
that there is no chance of survival. There will be no single enemy left and in several directions at once. That was an actual quote. So he's saying, listen here, if we even if we even hear a gunshot, <laughs> but all serious, if we detect that there's a missile coming to us, we gonna let loose everything we have. They're talking about going all out. That's why I used the word blitzkrieg. All right. When you get blitzkrieg, they mean you get bombarded with missiles, right? Or some kind of mu 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 um munition. For those who know football, you have the offensive line, the defensive line. If the defensive line, it'll be what? Let's just say it's four and four. All right. Five, five and five. All right. If it's the defensive line, offensive line, there'll be every man guarding, blocking, you know, the offensive man against the defensive man, so forth and so forth. If they bring in a cornerback, if they bring in a linebacker, that's called a blitz because you're bringing in more than, than what's um, equal playing fields. So if it's five on five, then the defense bring an extra man, not as an open man. And then they got something called the house where they bring everybody. You get blitz. That's called a blitz creed. You don't see it coming, right? You don't expect it. And that's what's going to happen to America. A blitz creed. You won't least expect it. And then and Russia also, ha also has something known as the dead man switch. So let's just say by some chance, everyone, one, everyone in Russia just like passed out, went unconscious. If those, if somebody was to strike Russia, there's an automatic switch that will let loose their missiles, all of them, in the direction of where the missile came from. Either way, they're going to get theirs off, right? So this is Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 3, verse 9, and verse 13 through 14. For out of the north there cometh a nation against her. Who was her? The Babylon the Great, right? Lady Liberty which shall make her land desolate, desolate, meaning empty, and none shall dwell there, therein. So that means it's inhabitable. So think about Sodom and Gomorrah. Even today, if you go to the physical location, there is such a highly concentrated um, level of sulfur in the alluvial deposits there still to this day that you, you virtually can't even live there. Right, that's what it means by it. The pitch, the nuclear fallout. That's why it's 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 ridiculous for people to be um doomsday preppers and getting grains and rice and all of that. All the food that you have that you're gonna be preserving for yourself is not gonna be enough for you to sustain life and even for you to even reproduce again. Because you're gonna eventually have to come to the surface level for sunlight. And if there's a nuclear war, it's going to be a nuclear winter because the dust and the particles and everything is going to block out the sun, which is going to drop the temperature on Earth. And on top of that, I'm talking about in America, and on top of that, the radiation levels are still going to be high. Even to this day, you can't even go to Grenoble because the radiation levels are still high there. So you still won't be able to survive from the nuclear fallout itself. Hence, it will not be inhabited therein. Let's get back to it. Verse three, they shall remove, they shall depart both man and beasts. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon. America is Babylon because this is a land of absolute freaking confusion. And on a small scale, it starts with the children by saying, you think you're a girl and you're a boy then you can get your gender changed without your parents consent. That's the world we live in. Then on top of that, all these holidays that we celebrate, they give you the, the sense of it's a celebration of happiness and righteousness, especially in Christmas time. And really is going back to pagan worshiping. It's also confusion and lies. And <laughs> hell, you go and buy you, you, go, you can go and buy you an orange beverage, right? It tastes just like orange, an orange or orange juice or whatever. It could be an orange soda. Look on the back, it says no juice. That's just confusion, right? Anyways, let's get back to it. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. The north will be Russia. The first one, the first verse I spoke of, it said, it said country. This is countries. It'll be Russia. But remember, 
In Revelation, it says, the beast shall hate the whore. The beast goes back to the seven heads and ten horns. The seven heads go back to EU. The ten horns go back to NATO. Who's the whore that's sitting on the beast? Who's the head of NATO and EU? America. That has the golden cup full of all types of abominations. You cannot make this up, people. You cannot. And they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. Elder Apostle Gabar always says this in, in, in retro. You have to be a visionary. We're talking about arrows being shot. Keep that in mind. I, you need to keep that in mind when it speaks about arrows. Because in your mind, what do you think of? An actual arrow. So, but back then, this is talking about a future prophecy. So what they know as an arrow back then, what they see in the future is a missile. They don't know what the hell a missile is. So they just think of an arrow. So when you're reading certain passages, you got to understand the context of what's being spoken of. But keep that word arrow in mind because you're going to understand what I mean by that when I continue to read on. So continuing. Verse 13. I'm sorry. Let me make sure I tell you that one. Jeremiah 50 and 13. Because of the wrath of the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, whose name you see the all capital letters for Lord, it shall not be inhabited, right, but it shall be holy, holy, desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at her plagues. Put yourselves in the red against Babylon round about. All ye that bend the bow. Let that sink in. The bow will be the silo where the missile comes out of. Think about it. Shoot at her. Spare no arrows, for she hath sinned against Jehovah. So why is America going to be destroyed? Because, what's his name? Um, Adolf Hitler or Adolf Schickergruber, he said it. He said it in, in um, a letter. He said, America has, he, it said, America has God's jewels. What do you think he meant by that? Hmm. I think he knew who the Lord's people truly were. Let's leave that alone. I don't want to get banned for speaking the truth, right? Let me, let me be quiet. Let me. I need to remain ignorant so I can remain blissful, right? Because he that increases of wisdom increases of sorrow. Nonetheless, <clears throat> get, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. So we're going to be destroyed because of the hardcore bondage, the slavery. The injustices, the unrighteousness, the debauchery, the abomination, how you came to this land with the Lord's word, but you hate instructions and cast his word behind him. You pretty much made a covenant with the Lord when you took on his word and you cast it behind him. It's so many reasons why America should be destroyed, but nobody wants to hear it. They look at us like the enemy when you're acting like the enemy isn't around you. Because the enemy has conditioned you to believe and to think and accept that all of this is okay. Because judgment is not executed speedily. It is still in the heart of men to do wickedly. But see, that's where grace comes in at. See, the grace of the Lord makes the wicked think that they can prolong their wickedness. No, the grace of the Lord is hoping that the righteous will return unto the Lord. But then once, the, once those doors of repentance are closed, it's a wrap like saran. Now, remember those arrows I was speaking about? 2nd Edges 16, 13. 2nd Edges chapter 16, verse 13 through 17. This is in the Apocrypha. All right. That's a part of the 1611 King James Version Bible, which I love and read dearly. For strong, this is this parable. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. This is Ezra in the Old Testament. Ezra is how you will pronounce his name in the Greek. Okay, or the subject, however you want to pronounce it, right? So this is what he's seen in the future, but he had to write it down in the context of what he known around him during that time in history. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows, there we go again, that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world 
arrows shot into the ends of the world? So let's go back to what Putin said. I'm gonna read all I'm gonna read all over. Putin told a conference in Sokai from the moment the launch of missiles is detected, no matter where it comes from, remember, ends of the world, from any point of the world ocean or from any territory, such a number, so many hundreds of our missiles appear in the air in a retaliatory strike that there is no chance of survival. There will be no single enemy left and in several directions at once. That's going to happen. And that's going to be to our redemption. Carry on. Now, going back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, verse 14. Behold, the plagues are sent. What does that mean? The missiles are sent. The plagues go back to Zechariah, the 14th chapter, when it says that your flesh and your eyes and your tongue shall consume away while you stand upon your feet. That's a vision Zechariah saw. So what can possibly consume you while you stand upon your feet, your, your flesh, your eyes, and your tongue? Watch Terminator 2 with Sarah Connor at the fence with those kids at the playground. That's what it's talking about. Man, this is beautiful. Beautiful nightmare, right? <laughs> Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again. What does that mean? They go into orbit. They connect with the satellite. They get the GPS. And then they nosedive into their target. Longitude, latitude, right? In degrees. All of that. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Goes back to it being desolate. Once again, the word arrow, like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backwards. Because once you let them them nukes off, you can't return them. It's like a bullet. Once you sh once you fire that bullet, you cannot change the trajectory. It must take its course. Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backwards. So even so, the plagues that shall be set upon earth shall not return again. Now listen here. Woe is me. Woe is me. Who delivered me in those days? So Ezra was telling you about a prophecy that's going to happen in those days. And side note, an asterisk for those of you who don't know. For Ezra to say this hundreds, if not I'm sorry, thousands of years ago, that means that he know he's going to be reincarnated again. So you people who talk about, oh, I didn't do that. My 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 grand my ancestors did that. You are your ancestors reincarnated to the third or fourth generation. And then how about this? You also reap the benefits of it. You have something known uh, you have something that's um unspokenly known as white privilege. But woe means destruction. So who's going to say, so we're here in America preaching it's going to happen. Who's going to save us? How are we going to be saved? How are we going to get through this? Remember, the Lord says two parts the man shall cut out, but the third part shall be brought through the fire. That's one third of Israel. So-called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, you are the Hebrew Israelites. And we're going to be saved because all these signs you see of what they call UFOs, they're trying to tell my little green men, and no, 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 they are ferocious beings. And beings that look like us as well, too. Read the book of Ezekiel when he saw the angel. Stop playing with us. But this is what we have to worry about when that time comes. Isaiah 26, 20 through 21. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So what are those chambers? The Lord is going to save us. The Lord is going to beam us up into those chariots, what the world England call UFOs. And we're going to be crying and shedding tears of freaking joy, man, because the evil has been decimated. It has been eradicated. It has been evaporated. It has been eviscerated. I don't know how many other synonyms, but Babylon is going to be destroyed. Righteousness is going to flourish and the evil is going to be put out. And we're going to be ruling with Yahweh Hashem Yahushai in the kingdom of heaven. Even all the nations and people who look at us and laugh at us, and they, when we get into the kingdom of heaven, they're going to be like, oh my God, this is what I'm supposed to be like, even though we're heathens? Yes. Yes. 
You had your own wife. You all that. No man. No. Ain't gonna be none of that. Ain't gonna be no smoking in the kingdom. Ain't gonna be no. Ain't gonna be none of that. No pornography. None of that BS. All righteousness for the nation of Israel. And all you other heathen nations, you are gonna have to bow down and get down. And you saw you gonna constantly get your behind wall because you was born to be the wicked. I got a little excited. So like, let me get back to them close out. Isaiah 26 and 21. So why are you preaching? Hey, why is the Lord going to destroy us? <laughs> close out. For behold, Yahweh coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. That's why, for your iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So while you're so concerned about why the Lord is going to destroy the earth, because look at it, you cannot tell me this place is not wicked. And if you don't want to repent, if you're an Israelite, of course, if you don't want to repent, then why then why should the Lord save you? Why should the Lord have mercy upon you or grace upon you? If you're a heathen, you ain't got a chance, but I'm talking about Jake. Anyhow, with that being said, pay you at fine fed, stay in the spirit, don't fear it, just endure it. Ask for forgiveness, pray without ceasing, stay humble, remain diligent. Come at Allah, Buffalo Babal, Shalom.